If the while I think on thee, dear friend, our losses are restored and sorrows end. In Denmark, not so long ago, my one true trusted friend was slain. Hear ye then this tale of Hamlet, the tragic royal prince of Danes. Now some may tell you of his madness, while others speak of wit and charm. But I offer that which I observed before he died within these arms. Some months preceding these events, Prince Hamlet's father lost his life. Now Claudius rules the Danish realm, the widowed Queen Gertrude, his wife. The shunning of the fair Ophelia, the end of love, the rise of fear, all this will I now deliver with Hamlet's face to mask my tears. With festivities commencing to celebrate the new king's reign, I arrive to find my friend treating Ophelia with deep disdain. It was then that I spoke to Hamlet, revealing that which stunned mine eyes. Prior night, his father walked among the mist before sunrise. That evening, Hamlet kept the watch, his father's form he hoped to see, and appear it did as foretold to answer Hamlet's trembling plea. Angels and ministers of grace, defend us. Be thou a spirit of health or goblin damned. Bring with thee airs from heaven or blast from hell. Be thy intents wicked or charitable. Thou comest in such a questionable shape that I will speak with thee. I'll call thee Hamlet, king, father, royal Dane. Oh, answer me. Know this, thou noble youth, the serpent that did sting thy father's life now wears his crown. Upon my secure hour, thy uncle stole with juice of cursed Hebena in a while. And in the porches of mine ear didst pour the leprous distillment. Thus was I, sleeping by a brother's hand, of life, of queen, of crown, at once dispatched. If thou didst ever thy dear father love, revenge is found most unnatural murder. But you, but you, Hamlet, remember me. Remember thee? Hi, thou poor ghost. 
Well, memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Remember thee? Yea, from the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial fond records, all souls of books, all forms, all precious past that youth and observation copy there, and thy commandment all alone will live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Yes, by heaven! So, uncle, there you are. Frailty. Thy name is woman. God, a beast that once discourse of reason would have mourned longer. Married with my uncle. And now to my word. It is adieu, adieu, remember me. I have sworn it. Now at this time, the king of players with his trunk of wooden puppets came. And in conferring with him, Hamlet knew how to achieve his vengeful aim. Oh, what a rogue and peasant slave am I. Is it not monstrous that this player here, but in a fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul so to his own conceit? Tears in his eyes. Distraction in his aspect, his whole function suiting with forms to his conceit, and all for nothing. Yet I, a dull and muddy metal rascal, peak like John a dreams, unpregnant of my cause and can say nothing. No, not for a king upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Bloody body villain, remorseless, treacherous, lecherous, kindless villain. Oh, vengeance! Why, what an ass am I. This is most brave that I, the son of a dear father murdered, must like a whore unpack my heart with words and fall a cursing like a very drab, a scullion. Fire upon it. Foe. About my brain. I have heard it. That guilty creatures sitting in a play have by the very cunning of the scene been struck so to the soul that presently they have proclaimed their malefactions. For murder, though it has no tongue, will speak with most miraculous organ. I'll have these players play something like the murder of my father before mine uncle. I'll observe his looks. I'll tempt him to the quick. If he but blench, I know my course. The play's the thing wherein I'll catch the conscience of the king. Speak the speech, I pray you, as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. <laughs> Suit the action to the word, the word to the action, with this special observance, that you overstep not the modesty of nature. For anything so overdone is from the purpose of playing, whose end both at the first and now was and is to Hold, as twere, the mirror up to nature. Go, my good friend, and make you ready. I will leave you till this evening. This play is an image of a murder done in Vienna. Gonzago is the Duke's name, Baptista, his wife. This is one Lucianus, nephew to the king.
poisons him in the garden for his estate. You shall see anon how the murderer wins the love of Gonzago's wife. And this the king could take no more. So incensed was he at this display. He stood at once and cried aloud, Give over the play, give me lights away. myself indifferent honest but I could accuse me of such things that it were better my mother had not borne me what should such fellows as I do crawling between earth and heaven we are errant knaves all oh, believe none of us to a nunnery go but soft now to my mother. On his way to his mother's room, Hamlet spied the repentant king, alone with reawakened guilt from what had occurred that evening. goes to heaven, and so am I revenged. That would be scanned. A villain kills my father, and for that I, his sole son, do this same villain send to heaven. And am I then revenged to take him in the purging of his soul when he is fit and seasoned for his passage? No. Up, sword, and know thou a more horrid hint. When he is drunk asleep, or in his rage, or in the incestuous pleasure of his bed, at gaming, swearing, or about some act that has no relish of salvation in it, then trip him, that his heels may kick at heaven, and that his soul may be as damned and black as hell whereto it goes. mother stays. This physic but prolongs thy sickly days. Ophelia's father, Polonius, was an advisor to the queen. He counseled her to be firm with Hamlet, then hid himself behind a screen. Then a seething Hamlet unleashed his rage upon his mother in her room. She cried for help. Polonius answered, thus ensuring the old man's doom. How now? A rat? Dead for a ducat? Dead! Is it the king? Wretched, rash, intruding, fool, farewell. I took thee for thy better. What's that, mother? A bloody deed? Almost as bad, dear mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother? Oh, shame, where is thy blush? 
Nay, but to live in the rank sweat of an inseamed bed. Stewed in corruption, honeying and making love over the nasty sty. Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what's past, avoid what is to come, and do not spread the compost upon the weeds to make them ranker. Good night, but go not to mine uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. to be kind. Thus bad begins, and worse remains behind. <laughs> Ophelia, in shock and grief from her father's death by Hamlet's hand, in a fit of madness drowned herself to end the pain she could not withstand. At her gravesite, Hamlet pondered the dread and wonder of lifetime's end. He came upon the skull of Yorick. Yes. Poor Yorick. I, I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He hath borne me on his back a thousand times. He hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now, your gambles, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set a table on a roar? To be or not to be, that is the question. Well, it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against a sea of troubles and by opposing end them. To die, to sleep, no more. And by a sleep to say we end the heartache and the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. Die to sleep, to sleep, perchance to dream. Aye, there's the rub. For in that sleep of death, what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life. For who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the pangs of despised love, or the law's delay, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin? <sighs> who would these fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, without the dread of something after death? The undiscovered country from whose born no traveler returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others we know not of. Thus, conscience does make cowards of us all. Ophelia's brother, Laertes, with King Claudius, conspired. In a duel with Hamlet was arranged. His demise was their desire. So a poisoned cup awaited Hamlet at the fencing match that day. But unknowing, Gertrude drank from it as the swordsmen began their play.
deadly ointment on his blade. Laertes struck Hamlet from the back. And then, with same envenomed blade, the wounded Hamlet did attack. and surged through Hamlet's blood. He stared at Gertrude's lifeless frame, and in his head these words resounded. The king, the king, the king's to blame. The point, envenomed to, envenomed to thy work! at this chance that are but mutes or audience to this act. Had I but time, oh, I could tell you, but let it be. I am dead, Horatio. Thou livest. If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world, Draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. The rest is silence. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. In Denmark, not so long ago, my one true trusted friend was slain. I held him as he breathed his last, this tragic royal, this prince of Danes. Praise or condemn him, I know this, to be with him was such glory. But now I draw each breath in pain to tell this mournful story. So gentle souls, if I may bring this tale of woe to end, and quote these words once said to me by my lord, my prince and friend. There's a special providence in the fall of a sparrow. There is a divinity that shapes our ends. He was a man taking for all in all. I shall not look upon his like again.